Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to show you guys five small tricks that you can use in order to improve your video editing workflow in DaVinci Resolve. So first off, whenever you're editing your footage on the edit page, you should probably close the effects library and media pool as long as the main thing you're trying to do is make cuts in your timeline. The reason for that is so that you can actually expand the size of your timeline at the bottom so that it can show more of your video at once. Also, when you're making cuts, generally you don't need the media pool to add footage onto the timeline or effects library to add special effects or titles there anyway. So they just kind of get in the way at that point. So how I generally edit my videos and would recommend that you do it, especially if you care about speed, is that when you are making your cuts, you actually have the video playing back at the same time. So that would be where you hit the space bar and you let it play while you're making your cuts. Um, and what will happen is that this timeline cursor, when it gets to the right edge, it'll automatically recenter, and that'll move the video footage that's actually showing in the bottom timeline. Now, that's normal, there's no problem with that, but if your timeline shows less of your footage, then it's going to be moving a lot more, and, and that can cause problems when you're trying to make a cut in the bottom timeline. It gets to the end, and then it suddenly just jumps on you. So if we go ahead and disable the media pool in the effects library here, you can see it expands the bottom timeline, and it takes a lot longer for the timeline cursor to get to the edge there, so it's gonna be jumping on you a lot less, and that can be really handy, especially if you're gonna be editing your video while you have it playing back at the same time so you can listen back to your own audio. So my second tip is the methodology I use for making cuts in the timeline, uh, especially for my first pass through of the raw video footage. Um, so this is gonna be to use the blade tool directly and you can do that by either selecting blade tool on the timeline hotbar or by hitting B as the hotkey. And generally I'll use the hotkey B because that's just quicker. And then when you find part of your video that you know you're gonna to wanna to cut away, and one of the easiest ways I can identify this is by finding areas that have no dialogue. So if this was a general video like Chris Tutorials, I would just go ahead and make two cuts there because I know I'm not speaking, so it's not really usable footage. So I do that by left-clicking twice, and that basically gives me a separate clip I can manipulate. Then I go to A for selection mode. I left-click it one more time. I hit the delete key, and it's gone the footage to the right of it is going to ripple over to the left, and it's gonna be more or less in the position I need it to be. So if you use this cutting workflow while you hit space to play back the video timeline, it can be quite quick. So if I hit space here to go into play mode, B for blade tool, left click, left click, A, select, delete, and everything slides over, that can remove a lot of dead space or bad takes with very little effort. Now you might also notice, and this is my third tip, um, that I tend to make my cuts forward rather than behind, especially when I'm doing my first pass through. So it's easier to make cuts forward when you kinda know your video footage already, if you were the one recording it, because you can kinda easily identify the bad takes or the dead space just from practice, knowing basically how you talk to the camera. So in that circumstance, it becomes okay. In other circumstances, especially if you need to be more precise, you may have to listen to it first so this tip doesn't apply. But the idea here is that you cut ahead of the timeline cursor. The reason for that is that if you cut behind the timeline cursor and then you make deletes, so I do the left click, left click, A selection mode, select the clip and delete it, it'll immediately stop the timeline cursor from continuing, uh, which can be a little bit annoying, especially if you're just trying to listen to the playback continuously. Uh, this also applies if you're trying to do trims. So later on when you're editing your video, you probably need to make some trims in order to make your video editing a little bit tighter. So if I make a cut here, just for example, and then I was going back with the timeline, I pass over it, uh, I see that maybe there's a couple seconds of dead space there and I want to trim it, I hit T to go into trim mode, I trim this over to the left. That's probably what you'll usually do, especially on the second or third pass through. Um, but when you do do that, it stops the timeline cursor. So it is a little bit faster if you can get away with it to actually make your cuts forward. So once again, I can make my cut here, I can select it, I can hit delete. And the reason I can do that is because I know just from looking at the thumbnails and the audio waveforms that that was either dead space or bad take. So I can just get rid of it immediately and speed up my video editing process because I know that I don't even need to listen back to that part of the raw footage. 
But once again, I generally would recommend this more for a first pass through because as you're getting your video to the final state, you probably do need to listen back to the video first before you make any additional edits. So at that point, you can make your trims after the timeline cursor passes over uh, the audio in the video in play mode, and then you just make your trim and you move on. But as you get to those second and third takes, you're going to have less edits that really need to be made anyway. So it's a fine trade off. Okay, so my fourth tip, if you can manage to get used to this, and I think it's easier if you're editing your own videos, like vlogs and that kind of thing, because you kind of know your own pacing, is to get used to editing the video at times to playback. So you can do this by hitting space and then L in order to make it double speed mode, or you can just hit L to go times one speed forward and then L again to make it times two speed forward. Basically, does the same thing. So if you're listening to the voice in the video at times two speed, generally it's not going to be that hard once you get used to it. Um, your mileage may vary, this might not apply to everybody. But uh, if you can manage to just listen back at times two speed and then make your cuts where you need to, going forward continuously at times two speed, looking ahead in the timeline, and then deleting whatever you don't need, you can get through the first pass through of your video much quicker than you otherwise would have. Of course, there may be times where you need to stop it, hit space, go back and listen to it one more time just to make sure everything was good there. But generally, I do find while editing videos, there's just a lot of areas where you can just breeze past it at times two speed and make the cuts as you need to in a rapid format. And then later you pass through it one more time before you go ahead and start adding effects and titles to your video and exporting it. So that basically leads into my fifth tip. Although the first four tips are mostly about speeding up your video editing process, I really recommend that you replay your video at least one last time after you think you're done in order to catch any mistakes that you may have made. So this is just really quality control. You can go ahead and get a drink or whatever while you're doing this. But after you think you're done, just go back to the start of your video, hit play, um, grab whatever, just watch your video back one more time, make sure it looks good. And then after all that's said and done, you can go ahead and export your video. But doing this, I have caught many of my own mistakes in the past. So it's pretty much always going to be a good idea to go ahead and rewatch whatever you're putting out there for other people to view. Okay, so that's going to be it for this quick video on five little video editing tricks that you can use in order to improve your video editing workflow and DaVinci Resolve. So I've been Chris, thank you for watching, and I will see you guys in my future video content.